Hey guys, it's Ben here, and today I'm going to be walking through the Hask Hell Try Hack Me Challenge. I just solved this one, and it was quite a fun one, so I'd like to share my solution with you guys. I've got the box up and running. Let's copy this IP address, and let's go to my folders. I've already got a terminal set up going, also made a directory for Hask Hell Walkthrough. Um, let's go into the recon directory and go into uh, the nmap directory. Sorry, nmap directory I created just so I have a nice organized place to put all my findings. And let's start off with a quick nmap scan. Let's just paste the IP into here and I'll complete it there and just walk it through. So I haven't specified a port range to, to scan. By default, it's going to scan the top 1000 ports. The TAC SV is for service enum enumeration, so we can find out what services are running on what ports. I'm also going to TAC N to get rid of DNS for resolution, TAC T4 to um, increase the speed a bit from the, the default, and I'm going to output this to fast tcp.txt. Let's run this scan and look for, wait, wait till the output returns. Um, we can see by the um, by the name of this challenge, Hask Hell, this is most likely, to, uh, this, this, this box is most likely include Haskell, the programming language Haskell. I haven't had any experience with Haskell, um, I just know it is a language. Um, the nmap scan has returned and we can see there are two ports, uh, two open ports in this top 1000 port scan. We could go in further and do a full thorough scan. We've got enough to work with in the meantime. So there's SSH and there's a HTTP service running on port 5001. So let's, let's actually investigate this HTTP service because maybe We'll find um, find what we need to there, and we won't need to do a forest scan. So five thousand and one. Welcome to functional programming two hundred and twenty. During this semester, we're going to learn the ins and outs of functional programming languages using Haskell. I'm not going to bore you by reading the rest of this, um, but I'm guessing this is a class. This is some sort of college class or university class where they're teaching Haskell. You can find your first homework here. Let's investigate this endpoint. So, um, I'm not going to read this again, but basically we're given the assignment to uh, create a function which outputs the Fibonacci sequence of numbers. Okay, and we can submit our homework here. Let's investigate what this is. Upload. So, it looks like this wasn't found. Have we got a 404 not found error? Yeah. So this endpoint doesn't exist, which is a bit strange. It tells us to upload our files here, but that doesn't exist. Okay, um, that's a bit strange. What we can do instead is just fuzz all the directories. We fuzz all the directories. We can see um, are there any other directories where we can upload, which isn't this one, which was suggested. We can discover that. So let's just do a basic um, directory directory uh, enumeration fuzzing. So I'm going to use the sec lists uh, word list, web content directory list uh, 1.0 and the IP is this and I'm going to be fuzzing um, this first directory. That's the like placeholder for the, the word from the word list we're going to fuzz and I'm going to filter uh, out with HTTP code 404. So I'll this to um, I do want to make a web directory so let's just make it the web I'm going to T this to recon web uh, fuff directories and let's see what this finds if it finds anything we will soon see one thing I have done which is wrong I didn't supply the port so we weren't getting any returns now we are getting stuff to work with um, we'll see if this Returns any directories you can look at. It's quite a big word list. Could have probably gone with the smaller one, but never mind. We'll see what this finds, if it finds something. Um, while that's loading, we can do some more investigation. So we, we're using Haskell. So this is a fairly, like I said, it's a new language to me. I had to do some basic um, research on how it works. It does look like quite a strange language. I I wasn't too familiar. 
going back to the wordless scan, we have found one endpoint, which is submit. Let's just investigate this submit directory. So sub oh, submit, and we can submit our assignment here. So we've got some sort of file upload functionality, it looks like. Let me just go back to this. Uh, why didn't that work? There we go. If we look back at the, the assignment, it says only Haskell files are accepted for uploads. Okay, so we can test that. We can test if this does work. I'm not going to do a thorough test. But what I can do is I can go back to here. I found what I'm looking for, so I don't need to do any further. I'm going to go into recon, and then I'm just going to echo test into, like, uh, a test.php. So we can test if this file extension, extension blocking really works. And I can change this to, like, far or... Uh, pi just just see if this really does work we also can look up what is the Haskell file extension because we don't know that we don't know what to put on the end so it's dot hs we can try so dot hs and we've got some tests right we can see what happens when we upload some files can we upload other, other files than Haskell files or does it have to be just yeah, I think you get what I'm saying. So let's go into this recon directory. Let's just start start with this text file, right? Upload it, and it doesn't seem to do much, right? We return back to where we were before. Okay, that's interesting, right? So maybe there is some checking. Just to confirm this, let's actually upload this .hs and let's see what this does. So we get this internal server error. Okay. So that's definitely different to when we did it with the txt. What happens if we do it with this PHP? Once again, yeah, there's nothing really. It just brings us back to here. So maybe there is some checking. Maybe, yeah, we want to actually execute code or get this initial access, initial access through Haskell. So we can, um, we can, we can look around. Let's let's look for reverse um, Haskell. Get a reverse shell. Let's see if we can find one of these. I found this one here, and I tried this, and I'll sort of walk through what I tried. Um, so let's just cd out of here into exploits, and let's git clone this, like so. It's downloaded onto our box. Let's just cd into this directory, and we can see that .hs file, which um, the Haskell file. So let's let's just edit this, right? Reverse shell.hs, and we can see we've got the reverse shell here. We'll we'll need to change this a bit, right? We'll need to add my IP here, 10.14.54.171, and put the port here. Which I mean, yeah, one two three four is absolutely fine. I will just get a netcat listener going up on port one two three four to catch any callbacks we get. And let's try upload this now. Let's see if this works. So we'll go into the exploits directory, upload, and we get this insert the internal server error. Please try again. So that didn't work. So that has scale reverse shell. I didn't actually end up using. I was a bit confused at that point, and I thought, okay, we can't get a reverse shell. Is it possible that we can get command execution? Can you run system commands through Haskell? So let's let's go through and do some research. So Haskell system commands. Let's try find a way to do this, right? So stack overflow. Executing system command in Haskell. This is loading quite slow. It has loaded. If I saw this function here, right? Import system.process main call command. We can always try this. Let's see if we can um, we, we can get this to work right. I am going to go and yeah, I'll, I'll sub all. What shall I call this? Pop.hs, and we'll paste this here just to play around with and see if we can get a basic uh, working command execution. So let's just start off with uh, who am I? Let's 
very basic. Let's just see if we can get some command execution and it's returned to us. So exploit pop.hs upload. And it is loading quite slow now. So it's not like it was before giving us that internal system, uh, system error. We are doing something on the back end. We'll, we'll wait and see. And it looks like this has actually compiled, right? And it's outputted output flask. So that could be the username. I've I've got a good chance. There's a good chance we've got command execution. Let's just do ls tag la just to see for sure. This will definitely be able to tell us if we have got command execution. And now let's try upload this instead. Will this work? And now we do have clearly a list of the directories. We can see there's like .py, so it's using Python somewhere, and obviously Flask is used um, as like the Python web server. So yeah, we do get, we do have command execution. We can run system commands. Can we now get a reverse shell through this? Um, I am gonna, I'm gonna change my listener just to get a bigger one, so I can have one all there, and I'm gonna go to rev shells. One thing we did know, I, 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 I want to know, as we discovered there's .pys, there's Python in use, we can just try a Python reverse shell. We can find one of these like this, and we can try this basically as our reverse shell. So I'm going to go back to our pop, I'm going to paste this in, and I'm going to uh, get rid of all these quotes, not get rid of them, um, escape them, just so that doesn't cause any errors, and we'll see if this works. I will need to, what I, I will need to do is import, no sorry, python tax c, tax c, and I'll put one here as well, and I on the end. I didn't, so I need to put one there as well, like so. I think that looks all right. Let's run this and see. So we've got a listener going. Um, let's see if this works. And we'll upload this, and it's loading, loading, loading. And if we go back, we do get a call back, so we have got a reverse shell connection, we can say id, do some basic who am I with flask, nice. I cannot clear, so let's just import that. Turn, oops, so we can clear, and I do want to um, get a bit more of a pretty shell, so I'm going to import pty, pty.spawn, bim bash, like so. And we've got a nice shell now. We can do some enumeration, we can see there's a Flask user, a Haskell user, and a Prof user. Let's go to the Prof user, and we can see we've got the user flag there. So we've got the user flag there. I'm not going to cut it out. don't want to spoil it. We've got the user flag. Nice. If we do some enumeration on this user profile, we can, we can see there is a .ssh um, directory, hidden directory, and we do have read access over that. So let's see if there are any SSH keys included. And there are, right? We've got read access. All, all users will have read access on this, um, this SSH key. So does that mean we can steal this and then connect back via SSH as this prof user? We'll see. Let, let's, let's try this, right? Cat ID RSA. And I'm just going to copy this. And let's go back to here. In my exploits directory, I'm going to vi idrsa, like so. I'm going to paste this and I'm going to quit. Um, I will need to change the permissions on this as by default it won't actually run, um, like so. And now let's try SSH with this idrsa, um, idrsa as the prof user on this IP address, like so. Let's just 
just accept to say yes. And let's wait. And look, we've SSH'd on. That's great. We've changed our user. We're now the prof user. Maybe we'll be able to privilege escalate to root from here. Let's start with some basic enumeration. Do I have any pseudo capabilities? And I do. As um, this prof user, I can run as root this flask, user bin flask run. That's interesting, right? I could possibly pop a, a shell, get a reverse shell through this. Just get, I'm going, I'm, I'm digging ahead. I haven't, I haven't actually explained what, what we're doing here. So let's, let, let's just try execute this, right? Let's go sudo, because we know we can run this, sudo user bin flask run and could not locate the flask application. Um, flask is like a web server for Python and it's saying it cannot locate the flask applica application. So maybe we have to supply a Python file to this. I'm not sure, we, we, we can do some more research, right? Let's just try get a basic Python shell. So import os os.system uh, bin bash. So this will hopefully just get us a bash shell. And if we can run it as sudo, we can get the bash shell of root. So we'll echo this into test.py. And can you do this now? Let's try this. User bin flask run. And then we'll supply the file there, test.py. And now it prompts us for the password because um, because we've, we've sort of changed this. That's what I did originally, and then I realized that's not how we do it. We have to, we'll, we'll, we'll have to just run this sudo user bin flask. I forgot to spy the run again. I don't want to do control C as that will lose my shell. Um, so sudo user bin flask run. And it gives us this error here. So let's 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 research this. It's saying something about a Flask app environment variable. So maybe we'll have to export an environmental variable. And there is this this export Flask app equals DB table. Okay, so can we do that? Can we export Flask app? And we'll set that equal to our test. So what I'm doing there is I'm setting up this Flask app environmental variable to not be an actual Flask application, instead be a malicious um, test.py file, which will just pop a shell. But the thing is we can run this Flask application with sudo, meaning we can run it as root. That means when we run this, hopefully we'll get a shell as root. Enough talking, let's actually try this. And look, worked, it popped to shell as root, we should be able to clear this now, and we can see the into the root directory, and there's the root flag. So that's this challenge done, um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.